everybody, this is uh, Spillage. This is the mind of Spillage. Vol- <laughs> what? <laughs> he just interrupt. He just interrupted my intro. <laughs> Well, folks, um, yeah, this is uh, the Minus Pillage episode three, and yes, I have some friends joining me at this time um, from um, this group, Atlanta Gamer Life. We have Kimiko, we have um, Kamal, and artist Marco Schizo, and yours truly, uh, Spillage from Atlanta Gamer Life. Welcome, all of you. Thank you very much for joining me. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. It, I guess it is a little time to turn up, but unfortunately, I, I'm I'm just not in the mood to turn up because of um just how this whole weekend ended. You know what I'm saying? It, it, oh, the story that just cons- conspired or perspired? Um. Hmm. Well, let, let me just let me just put it this way. You know how you you know how. So you know how you're, you know, get a nice unhealthy dose of fake news and to the point that you just ignore all news altogether. Um, Well, earlier today, I received a a text message while I was commentating earlier today um, about Kobe Bryant. And I actually thought it was fake news for a moment because, you know, I mean, come on. I mean, the comedian Sinbad died twice, according to Wikipedia. And then you have Bill Cosby died three times, according to Facebook and Wikipedia. So when I received the word um, from social media and from a friend saying that Kobe Bryant died, I, you know, I was for the first time in a long and for the first time, I was actually hoping for for it to be fake news. And um, so the first thing I did was I checked all the uh, local L.A. channels and the um, sports channels and even news apps such as the Bleacher Report and Yahoo News didn't pick up on story. So I was convinced then that it was fake news until like 45 minutes later. Then sure enough, now is on every single media outlet in the world about his passing. And to be honest with you, it's just very surreal. Yeah. Just like that. And it sucks. Yeah, it, it does suck. So, yeah, you know, it's it's amazing how you know, we we as human beings, we're so we're so caught up on the accolades of of the the many legends that passed on and you know, and when that day, you know, when that day came, then it's just a brief reminder for all of us that they're just as human as as you and I. Yeah. really blew my mind was that of all the sources to break the news first TMZ broke the news first before ESPN or any other media outlet that's crazy Mm, TMZ TMZ broke the story first Uh, 
It got to it before uh, ESPN, NBC, CBS, Fox, all these other um, major news media. TMZ broke the news first. I was like, how the hell did they get the the, the resources and who who's their source? Uh, it kind of shows you because, uh, believe it or not, TMZ has like a, I would actually say like a bigger following at this point because as like as of like the generation that we grew up in, like. Well, the generation that is now more so, TMZ is their news source in, in a lot of things. You have to look at the demographics, and TMZ does w- well enough has the resources to get the kind of scoop that you know those kind of scoops in early. They have showed that more than more than just this occasion. Yeah, and it's crazy because um, they actually um, Sky News Australia um, on YouTube they were saying that. A sheriff in the United States has condemned tabloid news website TMZ for breaking the news of Kobe Bryant's death before his family, describing it as extremely disrespectful. I put it in the link for you guys to review. I mean, that's another thing that actually notorious for. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like TMZ to me is like the Justice League of the paparazzi. Um, to be honest with you, it's. I mean, think about twelve years ago. Think about twelve years ago when um, when when Michael Jackson uh, passed away, right? And the tabloids swarmed his house like an infestation. You understand? There was this one. I mean, security couldn't hold them all. And one guy in particular, um, who was working for Yes Magazine, ran straight to the ambulance window and took a picture of Jackson's corpse. And made three million dollars for that picture. Very man, just pure evil right there. It really is. But companies like that have always had access to that kind of shit. And you know, I don't want to get too, too, too deep into like you know a lot of you know. I guess you could say underground esoteric like you know teachings and shit like that. But yeah, that's always happened, man. Like. Every time you see, like, something that happens at the beginning of the year, like, a huge celebrity always dies or something tragic always happens or, you know, like the time when a Aaliyah plane crash happened or, you know, like a, a rape allegation would come out or, like, a false, you know, like something, like the reporter earlier that did the Kobe Bryant, you know, report and she thought, everyone thought she said Los Angeles, you know, niggers, but it was like, trying to say Los Angeles Lakers and everyone's just like, oh, you know, well, she did that on purpose. And I personally think she did that shit on purpose, obviously, but I also understand that people make mistakes too. So, right, yeah, right, right. You know, but something tragic always happens at like the beginning of the year. Like just every single year it's happened. Yeah. It's, I don't even think it's by coincidence either. But, you know, I find it very, very unfortunate that um, we're – we're never going to hear the speech from Kobe Bryant once he is inducted to the Basketball Hall of Fame. That's not going to happen now. That's yeah, not. Man. Ugh, yeah, that sucks too. Yeah, that's not going to happen, unfortunately. Um, but needless to say, um, like like I uh, told you before, uh, Marco, uh, I'm not going to fake the funk. I mean, for the for the longest time, I mean, for the longest time, I did not like Kobe Bryant because of the way he treated his um, his teammates, the way he treated his coach. Um, you know, what I'm saying the way he acts when he doesn't get his way, I didn't like that. However, what I'm not going to do under any circumstance is to deny this man's accolades. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to deny his um, God-given talent and his surreal work ethic that he put in, the hard work he put in to reach these accolades. I'm not going to deny that. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm not going to do. He is indeed, without a doubt, one of the, what was that? Right, and he is without a doubt one of the greatest basketball players of all time. 
and also one of the greatest basketball players in our generation that we have the privilege to actually witness his career alongside uh, Michael Jordan and currently LeBron James. Yes. When Absolutely. You hear Lakers, the first thing that comes to your mind is Kobe Bryant. Yes. That's not Shaquille O'Neal. Nobody really talks about those members of the team that much. They just talk about, oh yeah, Kobe Bryant and the Lakers. That's or right. Automatic house in there. Unfortunately, once again, the shitty part about all this is that with the way social media is set up and, you know, with the recent events that happened earlier today, people, you got two sides to it. One side is going to focus on the sports aspect of it and the other side is going to be like oh well you know he was the guy that did all the you know the rape allegations and abusing women so it sucks that you know uh talented hard-working athletes reputation can be ruined by like you know just the word like others like but one of the Right, right. Like, just like Bill Cosby and everybody else, I mean, not defending anybody or uh, accusing anybody. Um, but the facts are, like, regardless of what people do, it, everybody always wants to point out that one negative or, you know, they, they want to, I don't know if it's people, like, kind of wanting to kind of, like, show that, like, you know, take, take it away from you and be like, well, you're no better than me, so they try to prove, like, you know, right. just just to point out your flaws. And that's just, that's just kind of how I realize, like, people are, in a sense. Like, they're very quick to point out flaws. But that's Especially fine, now. because, that's, but that's fine, because the thing is, when, when, a, when a person point out the flaws, that just comes to show you another side of human nature, which is hypocrisy. Like, adults by nature, are hypocrites. And that's a fact. I mean, yeah, sure, you can point you can point out all the flaws you want, but just be ready for your flaws to be called out. And when you when when someone call out your flaws, don't say shit. It's just that simple. Keep your mouth closed because That's right. That's right. But you know something. But but you know something, fellas. But you know something, fellas. There's one thing I can say about Kobe Bryant is that despite all the craziness that he went through in his life, especially in his most uh, difficult time in his career in the 2000s with the rape allegations and and and, and all this stuff and marriage and turmoil and all that stuff, despite all the craziness. This man never lost focus of the game. Never. There's one thing I cannot, that's one thing I can not, that's one thing I just can't, I just cannot say is that he lost focus of the game. He never lost focus of the game. Despite all the trash talk from his opponents, 
And you, you, you know what Matt Barnes did to him. And you know how he responded? He scored 40 some points. Yeah. And that goes to show you the love he has for the actual game and the sport itself. And that's that's one thing that made him a legend, like regardless of uh, everything else, like the news. Like, cause to me, certain things are really, you know, nowadays with social media and the way the news is covered nowadays, they get too they get too much into people's personal business. Yes. Like, yes. Like if if Kobe and his wife is going through something. It's for nobody else to call out. You know what I'm saying? But you see, the way, but see the way society, the way society has it set up. This is the same goes for the National Football League. Like, think about it. Like everything that goes on in your home is no longer your business. It is your employer's business, and it and it shouldn't. And it, it, it and that should never come. It should never be. But it is, unfortunately. And so when when people out there being the so-called crusaders of justice and they out there say, hey, uh, Curtis just just slapped his wife around. And so what what's what the National Football League going to do about that? And and but the answer should be nothing, because for one, that's not the league's business. What goes on in a man's home, if anything it should be the authorities because that's a crime. That's aggravated assault. The league shouldn't have anything to do with um, with anything, you know what I'm saying? But the thing is, I just find it sad to me that despite all of the money that you make, you're still not free. You're still not free. I mean, think about it. I mean, Adrian Peterson... Two years ago, remember, he was suspended by the National Football League for spanking his child, for disciplining his child in his own home. He wasn't abusing the child. He wasn't abusing the child. He was disciplining the child. He would discipline the child the same way his parents disciplined him and made him the man that he is. And the league intervened and suspended the man for three games. It's nonsense. witch hunt. Somebody hated you, whether it be racist or not, 
Who cares? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not to say, I'm not like saying it's right or anything, but at the same time, it's like, you, you, you don't understand, like, by allowing yourself to get too much into that, you're giving them too much power over your life. Mm-hmm. And you're allowing too right. much. So it's like, if they don't like you, let it be. Let them dwell on that. You know what I'm saying? Let them think every time they see you. You don't have to do that. You go about your life as you normally will. You know what I'm saying? And that's the best thing you can do. Because that in itself is success. Yes. And you got to look at how money is. People always want to go, oh, this person got this much, this much. What is money in the bank? It's just that, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, it's power, but like, I thought it was a pay per view. Huh? I thought it was a pay per view. A pay per view? Well, you know, <laughs> well, you know something, you know, despite all the craziness and all the witch hunt, you know, Kobe Bryant never lost focus of the game. Oh, yeah. The man stayed focused. He. He scored. He put it down. He, it seems like every time he gets pissed off, he just puts sixty points on the board. He take <laughs> like seriously, like every time he gets pissed off, he take it out on his opponents in the best way possible by breaking records. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. We shouldn't have lost. It's a difference between losing and be like, damn, you know what? We got our plate. And that's a difference than losing because somebody on the team didn't want to do this or do that. Mm-hmm. You know? Sometimes it's on yourself. And sometimes that anger is just, hey, I'm mad at myself because I allowed the loss and we shouldn't have lost because we're better than these guys, you know? Right, right, right. And so I look, I so I, you know, I look back at all the players who who be dealing with losing streaks in the worst way possible, and they they go to social media and they they put their teammates out on full blown blast, and it just comes to show you, compared to Kobe Bryant, like the, the man's mental toughness is just unparalleled because you know what I'm saying despite all the beef despite all the the you know the the conflict with the teammates the man simply kept it in the locker room and the only way that got out is if the classmates opened their mouth about it when was the last time really have you seen Kobe Bryant just openly and publicly just call out and put their uh, team members on full blown blast simply because uh they you know that his team lost a few games. When was the last time he actually did that? I would say I would give that due to like then again you, you can't recall it but he just grew up in a different time, you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right, because he may be a few years older than us. However, we came from that same generation in which if we have conflict, if we play, if we play any, it doesn't matter what sport we play, but if we have conflict with our teammates, we, we handle it in the locker room and it stays in the locker room. It never leaves the locker room. It's crazy. I mean, it's almost like family today, to be honest with you. Right. Like it never leaves the house. That's right. It never, yeah. Yeah, it's that simple. It's 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 it's, it's the showing of manliness. You know what I'm saying? But then when you look back and you look at um, Odell Beckham Jr. and his shenanigans, the way he carry himself every time he he has a losing season. You know what I'm saying? It really sets the tone. It shows the difference on on what uh, on the class of at what kind of class athlete you know the, that Kobe Bryant is. And so, you know, the thing is now that he's gone, the Lakers definitely got to win it all for him. They definitely got to win it all. They got to go all in now. If they, yeah, yeah. If if because right now the Lakers lead the West in the in the uh, conference. So the thing is, and on top of everything else, you know the uh, Western. I'm sorry, the All NBA All Star Game is in a couple of weeks. And I think it would be great for to honor Kobe Bryant the best way possible by having both the Eastern and Western Conference, you know, say, for example, the East where uh, number eight jersey, number 24 uh, jersey, and the West where a number eight jersey in honor of Kobe Bryant. I think that would be cool. They wear, the, they wear their awake... They wear they wear their away colors of of his jersey with the number twenty four, and then the West uh, wear the number eight home color jersey for the West. I think that that would be pretty cool. That'd be pretty fire. I mean, I would like to see that. I mean, I mean to be honest with you, I mean LeBron. He really has uh, he he really has a the the a load to carry, uh, to say the least. I mean, you know, what I'm saying because it's. LeBron have like three championship rings, right? Um, LeBron. Yeah, yeah, he's got three, right? Um, yes. He, no, wait, he no, he has. Yeah, he yeah, he won twice. He won twice with Miami and one over at uh, Cleveland. So if he wins this one in LA, he'll be the first. Um, I think he'll be the first NBA player to win uh, three champions, uh, four championships from three different teams. I don't think anyone's ever accomplished that. I think Robert Ory uh, did he accomplish that? Because what other team did he win the championship besides the, uh, the Lakers and the uh, Spurs? Oh, um, shit, dude. I don't know what I can think of. I think it had to be the it, it had to be those two teams, the Spurs and the and the Lakers, that Robert Ory. Because uh, I think he won it with two different teams. I don't think nobody in history ever, um, you know, win the championship. I know he's won like seven championships. It was, um, it was with the Pistons, the Bulls, the Lakers, and the Spurs. Really? Yeah. So Robert Ory won seven NBA championships with, was you say, four different teams? Uh, Wow. Wow. Oh, man. Wow. Well, he's definitely a Hall of Famer. Yeah, he's definitely a Hall of Famer. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Hall of Famer. I can't see. I don't understand why he's not in the Hall of Fame yet. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I don't understand why he's not in the Hall of Fame yet, Dan. Well, well, needless to say, Kobe definitely got to – Kobe and the Lakers definitely got to win it for Kobe. I mean, if that doesn't inspire a team, then to win it all, I don't know, you know, I just don't know. Oh, yeah. It's going to go on, man. Like, he's done a lot. What do you want to get out of I don't think it ever can be taken away because, I mean, it's no. great the basketball, you know? <laughs> yeah. It, it, his, heart, his accolades will never be taken away from, as a matter of fact, come to think of it, you know, the NBA – has suffered two major deaths in one month because you know a few weeks ago the former commissioner David Stern passed away from a massive heart attack. And so, yeah, so he passed away. He the one who brought Kobe in, um, you know, gave him his jersey back in, was it 1998, I believe? It was 98. When he started, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so two, you know, two major uh, NBA um, figures have passed away. That's a huge blow for the NBA. And so, yeah, you know, as a matter of fact, what was so crazy? This is how you know that Kobe Bryant is such a legend. It was like. The, the the global reaction from athletes worldwide when they received the news of his death. I mean, Tiger Woods and and uh, Odell Beckham Jr. and and LeBron James and so on. I mean, it's just you know it, the way the way they you know gave homage to him. That just comes to show you how much of a, a great athlete that he, that he, that he, uh, that he was. Yeah, you know, it, it extends beyond the court, too, because, you know, it, it may have started on the court, but it definitely extends beyond the court. Yeah. And also a little-known fact, you know, Kobe Bryant is the only NBA champion to win Academy Award because he won the Oscar a few years ago right after his um, – Retirement because uh, he had it was an animated short called Dear Basketball, and he won Academy Award for that. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm hmm. I didn't know that either. Yeah. Yep, the only NBA champion to win an Oscar. Yeah, I never heard of that. I was talking to you just told me. Mm hmm. I mean, that man, that man is, is accomplished a lot. You know, and it's just a, it's a real shame that his life has been you know snatched like that. But you know, you just you just never know. You you never know. You just never know when that's gonna happen, man. Nobody does, and that's the scary part. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You know, just kind of goes to show you how much you know, take life for granted. You don't even think about shit. You just go on day to day, living your regular life, and then boom. Have to, have to. You know, it's it's a, it's a, it's a real, you know, it's it's a real shame to just you know, go through life without even trying. You know what I'm saying? Because that's where regret that's where regret comes in, and you don't want your last moments to be filled with regret. What could have been? That's why you gotta live life with no regrets. You know, do your best to because you never know when it's gonna end. Period. Right. That goes to everybody. You just, you know, even even like the loss of people. You know, mm-hmm. you never know when you're gonna lose someone, and that's just the the reality of life. You know, it's you're born and then you die, and you never know when you're gonna die. You just never know, and you know. Like, so, and it also goes to show you how blessed some of us are, because I mean, anybody can go like at any time. Like, even the night, you know, but you know, in yeah. general, just for the conversation, it's um, 
But right. in certain countries, people live with this threat like every second. And it's, it's like, you know, to us, it seems like something that's far away. But to them, it's like, it's always there. That's just so close to them at all times, you know? Yes. And we don't have to really, you know, it's, it's scary. You, you got to give things in a sense that, I don't know, because that's kind of, that's just kind of, I insulted myself with that. <laughs> but, you know, nonetheless, I mean, the truth. Yeah, nonetheless, be thankful for the, you know, your life in general. Like, when you when you wake up, just, just shoot. Yeah. Be thankful, like, right now that we in this call, we're able to have this conversation, we're able to talk with friends, you know? Yeah. It's just very, very true, man. Absolutely. The thing, the thing is, you know, death will make you think. If death doesn't make you think, I don't know what will. Yeah, it makes per- it make it make perfect sense. But I guess let me rephrase. But let me rephrase when I say uh, death will make you think. Um, let me let me let me let me let me explain when I said that. When I say death will make you think, you know, it's amazing how, you know, people don't re- you know when 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 you see somebody that passed on, and then the first thing that crossed your mind is, oh man. Perhaps there's some things I need to change. You know, it shouldn't have to come to that point. But it always, it does. It always does. When when you see somebody that's very close to you that um, that passes on and the first thing that crosses your mind is, man, perhaps I need to do some reevaluating with my life. Or, or I, Yeah. Second of all, like that type of shit will just make you stop, think, and just pause for the rest of the night. Like, dude, this is what it looks like when you die. Like, this is a dead body. Like, that you're saying that it's real. It's not even like a movie when you can tell. Like, dead bodies in movies just look totally different than an actual deceased body that's in front of you. Like, it's a totally different feeling you get. It's no joke. Like, it just makes you stop and reevaluate everything. Like, even it can even mess your day up, to be honest with you, man. Like, you'd be in, like, a bad mood or you'd be, like, in a sad, depressing mood. But then it, it, that other part of the, you know, the balance spectrum comes back in. And it's just like, all right, man, well, I just need to live my life and just 
So yeah, uh, I can. Yeah. But uh, like, like even the documentary Faces of Death, I don't want to get too off something, but yeah, it's like, but, but, it's, it's, it's there. It's kind of reality, you know. But you know, you're absolutely right, um, um, Kamal. You know, death can make you or break you, given the circumstance. Now, imagine that you're the widow of Kobe Bryant. And you have to bury him and your firstborn child. Now that, woo. Yeah. It's just, oh man, like. Man. That's just, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a crazy thing, you know. Like, even I, me, I never, but I, I had to go through that with my mother, like, in my lifetime, you know. But, I mean, that's, that's actually natural and normal in a sense, you know. The parents don't want to go before the kids, kids don't want to go. <laughs> yeah, but when you, yeah, but when the love of you, but when the love of your life dies, and also your firstborn child dies, it takes a, a colossal amount of strength and support to just to just get through that. thing it's gonna be a roller coaster a roller coaster uh of emotion in the world of sports especially you know got a set up for you know Kobe's um you know memorial and so on. I if I have to take an educated guess it would make sense for them to have like a uh, a memorial of Kobe Bryant over at the Staples Center in Los Angeles. That makes perfect sense to me. You know what I'm saying? You know, because I'm pretty sure it's going to be a lot of diehard Laker fans that will show the love and support of the future Hall of Famer. And so the only thing left for us to do is just keep our eyes and and, and ears open for what comes next after this uh, devastating event. So uh, with that said, uh, fellas, I just want to say thank you very much for for joining me for this uh, third episode uh, of the Mind of Spillage. And I'm pretty sure that uh, next episode will be something more um, more uplifting, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, something more. Our uh, hearts go out to the family for sure. Yeah. You know, this, this, this episode was not to sit here and, you know, talk about anyone in any kind of negative way. We Absolutely not. Might really express our minds and how we felt our impact was yes and as far as um i'm more into the more intimate part of the situation i know that his wife and his family and even his uh i believe they have a surviving daughter right yet i think so yeah okay so i i definitely feel that um i will obviously give respect to all of them and I know this is nothing. After all, the everything happens and goes away. At the end of it all, the loss of that family, they're going to have to deal with that for pretty much a lifetime. So, you know, mm-hmm. all I can say about that is definitely, I, I know from my own personal experiences of family loss, but it's not about me, it's about them on this situation. Mm-hmm. And we want to give you know, definitely our support and condolences to the family of the Bryant. Absolutely. Well said. Well said. Well said. So until then, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much 
for uh, for joining us, and um, be sure to like, click, and subscribe. Until then, I'm Spillage with the, with the rest of my friends of Atlanta Gamer Life. Until then, have a good one.